Hey everybody, welcome back to Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop. This is Craig and this video is going to be number four, chapter four in my series of completed builds. And this one will entail builds number 16 through 20. So let me get the camera turned around and get going on them. Okay, so we'll start with number 16 here. The Ravel 1969 Camaro Z28. This is the second one I've done. And I did this one as a tribute to my favorite cartoon growing up. Uh, who am I kidding? I still haven't grown up. But regardless, this is the tribute to Scooby-Doo. This was done in 2019. And Scooby-Doo was introduced in 1969. So 50 years. And I chose the 1969 Camaro. Once again, 50 years. So I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good one to use as a tribute. Um, this one was painted in Testers Extreme Lacquer Root Beer. I did put Wet Look Clear on it. I don't know that I wet sanded it, but I'm pretty sure I polished it. I used the black stripe decals. So, you know, Scooby was brown with black spots. So I do brown with black stripes on this one. I use Fireball Model Works white letter decals for it, for the tires. I use BMF bare metal foil for the trim, all the window trim, front, back, and sides. Once again, I'm pretty sure I noted that the first time through, but this was a really, really nice kit. Everything fits really good. Um, there's 113 pieces. And you'll open it up and get minimal flash to have to deal with or mold lines or anything like that. So overall, just a just a wonderful kit, a fantastic kit. So let me let me cut you to the engine compartment and interior picks here. We'll zoom in on the engine compartment here, and you can see I did add spark plug wires. I did them in brown, kind of match the theme of the car. Swing it back around. You see the hooked up to the coil there. We'll go to the interior. Basic black interior. I did add door locks on this one. Some copper wire painted Molotel chrome. Zoom back out. Okay, so on this one I will pick it up and I will show you that I actually made custom license plates. Not too hard to do, I just took the image from Google shrunk it down and printed it out and the SDU Acme license maker license maker was the let me get it to focus here there you go I used the Acme license maker on my computer it's just a website all sorts of states every state and different years vintage available pretty easy to make Okay, up next is the Ravel 1968 Corvette Roadster. Now, this one was originally done in a custom mix of craft paint, my very first craft paint job on a, on a body. And I cleared it with Pledge Revive It Floor Gloss, you know, future for most of you out there. But after it dried, the, the paint it, it kind of cracked the clear cracked. I don't know if it's the paint or the clear. I think it was the clear and It wasn't enough to really see in pictures So I still took the pictures and I, I, I kept it like that for quite a while because I built this in 2019 But And it was for a, a box stock build-off So I always knew I was going to take it back apart and add 
add some details, spark plug wires and, and stuff like that to it. But I just never got around to it for a while until earlier this year when I finally decided to just take it apart and even repaint it. So I took it apart and I stripped it real easy and, and LA is totally awesome. Stripped it off real good, real clean, real quick. And I reprimed it and repainted it and I used Tamiya X34 Metallic Brown. And that's what you're seeing right now. And I cleared it with Createx 4050 UVS LS Clear. And the funny thing is, is that the X34 Metallic Brown is almost an exact match to what my wife mixed up as a custom color for me for this. So kind of funny, you almost couldn't tell the difference between the two. You can see right here, this is with no top. I will put the convertible top on it. Okay, so here it is with the soft top on it. And as I said, I always knew I was going to take this back apart and, and add some more details to it. So I finally did this year after like what, four years, I finally took it apart and added some details. I'll show you those in just a moment. And we'll zoom in on the engine compartment on the Corvette here. And you can see I added spark plug wires. You can see the coil there. That is machine coil from off the sprue dot com. He's got some pretty cool detailing supplies and wheels and tires and all that stuff. He's got a lot of good products. Check them out. Off the sprue dot com. And we'll spin it around to the other side. And you can see the heater hoses I added. A little bit of texture to them. I was using the leather cord at the time. And we'll swing around to the interior. khaki craft paint on the interior and I did end up adding valve stems to this one after I took it apart See them up top there on that wheel. Focus in. And we'll zoom back out. And here it is with the hard top on it. So you get the two tops, you get the soft top and the hard top. You get a choice of three hoods to use on this one. You have this one. You have this other hood. And you get one that's flat. I don't have it to go right now, but it's just flat. It doesn't have any kind of bulge or anything like that on it. So three different hoods and two different tops to build in many different ways with the custom wheels and the blower and scoop for the engine. So a lot of different ways to build this one. I just chose to use, build this one as the factory L88 version. And moving right along, we have up next the Ravel 1970 Ford Mustang Boss 429. This one is an old another old monogram mold uh, 124 scale for this one there's 108 pieces in this kit it is painted in model master citrus yellow metallic 
I painted over a tester's diamond dust base because I found out that base color does make a difference with with this with this color the citrus yellow as I went up to a charcoal color it got a little bit darker and I painted it over a black and it got even darker so I like this lighter version of it so that's what I used I did use a tester's gloss clear I use craft paint for the interior folk art hunter green is what I used um, I did wire the engine and I use bare metal foil for all the trim I'll take us in closer to take a look at the engine compartment I did add spark plug wires to it I did them in green to match the theme of the car green car Spin it around to the other side, get a look at the other side. And we'll move to the interior. Spin it around to the driver's side. really can't see them here but you see the printed out gauge decals that I used just got some images off Google printed them out and put them in oops and you can see some wood grain I did for the steering wheel center console background to try to catch the dash a little bit there you go get a little shot at the clock in the dashboard too okay we'll zoom it back out it does come with louvers I have them mainly off um, you can just set them on or glue them on or whatever you want but they can be added or subtracted whenever whenever you feel like it all my pictures but I pretty much left them off so again this is just an, another great old former monogram mold just an excellent kit they, they made quite a few good ones back then monogram did and this is just one of them up next we have the monogram 1970 Buick GSX this is in 124 scale this is another old monogram mold, another old monogram kit. There's only 86 pieces in this one, a little more basic. This is not the Ravel re-release that they just released um, late last year, early this year. This is um, an older monogram release. I would love to have the new, one of the new releases or whatever, do another one, but this one, I just, I know they only made them in yellow and white from the factory in real life but I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it so I, I looked around did a lot of research on Google and stuff to see what color I could use and I came up with the light gunmetal TS 42 I thought it would really be a nice contrast against these black stripes and I used TS 13 clear I painted the hood stripes on that was the most challenging part of the kit was was taping off and striping painting the stripes on molten and taping off the stripes because you have that center missile shaped stripe that's in white and yellow and it has the red outline I, now if they just made that red outline you know and left the middle blank and made these decals that would be awesome but and they kind of, I guess they expect you to either do it in yellow or white and not veer off on the colors like I did. But yeah, that was a trick, but I learned a lot and it was, it was, it was kind of fun to do. It took a lot of patience and took two or three tries, but, but I got it. The back end on these also as kitted, they, they're, they're kind of squatty in the back. 
So I took some styrene strip that I had, a one millimeter thick styrene strip, and I cut some pieces off, and I ended up using two pieces stacked on top of each other, so I raised it two millimeters. And let me see if I can show you here real quick. Right under there, where the suspension piece glues, as my hood falls off to the chassis, I added two one millimeter pieces of strip there, and underneath these springs, I also added two strips. You can't see them from here, which makes it makes me happy because you can't see them. But yeah, that that helped raise it just enough to look right. Fish my hood out from behind between my guys back there. There we go. I'll take you in for a closer look at gen compartment on this one. You can see I did wire it again. Use the yellow wires for this one. Simulate the maybe the Axel, famous old Axel spark plug wires in yellow from the day. And the other side. You can see you get some pretty decent engine compartment detailing decals on this one. Interior. Once again, the wood grain on the shifter handle and the center console. Basic black for the interior. On the driver's side, you get a shot at the steering wheel and the dash. Can't quite see the gauges. And your back seat. Not too many cars I can get a back seat view on, but this one can. Good shot of the center console. And that is paint, that is not a decal. And we'll zoom it back out. So again, just a just a really Really nice old, old kit from Monogram. Just love these old muscle car kits that they put out back then. And we go to our final one for the day. For this part is the Monogram 1966 Ford Mustang GT350. This is the Shelby GT350. Yet another monogram mold. That'd be the third three in a row that I did. Uh, this one has 89 pieces. I painted it in Tamiya TS51 Racing Blue, or even it used what's called Telefonica Blue as well. This was done over again a Tester's Extreme Lacquer Diamond Dust base. I also spoon tested it over a graphite dust, which is a gunmetal, and then a metallic black, the blazing black, and it darkened the color exceedingly as, as you went up in, in darkness on the base coat. So I stuck with the silver base coat and a little bit of a lighter blue, not really light light, but lighter than the other spoons, although they were great colors. I cleared it with TS-13 clear. I tried to use the strike decals going down the the hood and the roof and the and the deck lid there, but I, I couldn't get the trunk stripes. I did those first. I couldn't get them to lay down quite right. And as I tried to move them around, they just ended up breaking apart because I moved them too much. Any any decal will do that, even the best decals. So try not to move your decals around too much. I did leave the the lower body panel stripes on. Those went on good, and I, so I kept those on. 
contrast the color a little bit. I ended up using parts boxed rear tires, bigger rear tires, because the same size tire all around just kind of look funny in the back. Those are a little bit big in the back, but I just haven't been able to find a, the right size tire that really looks any better than that. So that's how it sits for now. And we'll take you in for a closer look at the engine compartment on this one. You can see the yellow performance spark plug wires. I added a coil out of some piece of sprue. Just sanded it down and drilled a hole in it and painted it to make it look like a coil. And the other side. This one you can actually get a pretty good look at the decals, the dashboard, gauge decals and whatnot. Swing it around to the driver's side. The same look, there you go, a good shot of the gauge decals there. And the horn button. Get a pretty good, you can get a pretty good back seat view on this one too. We'll zoom back out on this one. So I jiggle the camera. Just a great old monogram kit with their usual good fit pretty decent details molded in they may not give you extra parts but the parts that they give you are, are nicely detailed easy to detail paint so even though it's an old monogram kit not the new re-released version of it uh Ravel keep on re-releasing these old monogram kits in 124 scale they are some of the, the best kits ever made Despite being older molds, they, they've held up to the test of time.